So what we've got here is a little Daiwa. It's a 1050. It's fairly cheaply constructed inside. But um, I, I reckon a lot of people will have these. And I bought this for like a few pounds. I think it was about three or four pounds or something like that. And um, this reel will essentially be used for a little video. Um, I kind of doubt it'll resell for very much. So after that it'll go in the spares bin. But I did want to show you just one little thing with this reel. Um, just the, the slight difference in approach between the Japanese and uh, the old Mitchell reels. So the first thing that we see is, uh, see the old Mitchell reel here? Um, it has a, a main cog and uh, like a cam rider that slides up and down. And then the handle section tends to be connected directly to the main cog. Uh, in some cases on Mitchell reels you've got an ambidextrous fitting but uh, in, in, in most cases this particular reel is, is fixed. This is just held on with a pin. Uh, it looks like a rivet but it's actually a pin, it just lifts out. And you've got a cam here which rides on a, a little cam rider on the uh, the main cog there and spins around. And uh, interestingly enough, these later Mitchell reels, um, they they have um, main body plates which just fit on with a um, a click and a, and a single screw, and that and that's the whole thing uh, sorted out, you know. Which is which is an interesting approach. Uh, the old Mitchell reels obviously have have the uh, traditional screws pretty much like this and uh, but if you see the approach here this is an ambidextrous reel the shaft for the spindle which, which holds the spindle on actually goes all the way through and then the arm um, goes onto there and there's like a hex nut and you can just see if I keep this in focus you can just see it like a hex nut um, which fits over the, the end of the hex which, to drive the main cog and uh, it, that's kind of a different approach to the Mitchell reels where you have a left hand thread to take the handle off and it's a bit more complicated and it does give you the ambidextrous finish of course um, so on the Daiwa inside it's interesting the difference in approach with the Japanese because as soon as you take the, uh, the lid off this you can see straight away it's just completely different the way that the they've been thinking about doing this. Now it has to be said that um, most of the this type of reel originated in the West. I think one of the first ones was made by Olcox and things like the Olcox Duco uh, are an evolution of the very first spinning reels. The first one was invented by um, Illingworth I think, uh, called the Threadline Reel. Um, but look at the approach here. The, the cam is completely different in the way that it works and the way that it's designed and that's the difference between the Japanese and uh, and the French essentially who, who make the Mitchell reels and the Alcox Duco of course which is uh, very similar to the Mitchell reels anyway I just thought I'd show you that this little diver uh, this will come up on a little video later on and it'll end up as a spares reel because um, it isn't particularly desirable real value wise although there's probably very little wrong with it it does look a bit dirty but as we've been through in these videos before um, if it reels just a bit dirty then you just clean it up <laughs> it's not really that big a deal and there are pretty easy ways of doing that so so that's the little Daiwa okay so the next reel I'm going to show you is this um, this is a Young's Pride X oh sorry it's a Bodex and um, We've actually seen this kind of video, reel before on these videos, but one of the reasons that I keep showing them is because they have different faults and have different things wrong with them. Now this has a, this actually has a working Slater latch, um, believe it or not, uh, as you can see it is busted. Um, it's got some hard grease in it, it's very difficult to take off, and um, the thread is preventing it coming off as well, which is not very good to do, not easy to do on the video. Uh, inside this actually looks okay. Um, although somebody set the ratchet onto double both sides, <laughs> so it's giving me a double ratchet at the moment. But as you can see, there's um, this piece here. This is this is very important, and it's like a piece of bakelite too, which is not easily repairable. Um, you can repair it actually, but it's it's quite a, a detailed repair, and wor it's worth more than the value of the reel to do that. Now, what you can just see there at the top there, that is the top of the axle. That goes through the centre of the reel, and that there, that is a slate latch catch. You can see it moving there at the top. Now, what goes here 
is an adjuster screw which holds the drum off the base of the reel and so without that you can't really run this reel um, and so that does have to be repaired and it would be easy to take a spare set probably off um, an, old, an old reel now then there is one other fault with this reel um, the, the foot looks okay but here uh, this is the drag mechanism and it should have a plastic catch on it so that's not impossible to repair either actually that, that's reasonably easy so I'd just like to let you know the kind of faults that you do find and um, these are uh, easily repairable um, so for this you can either get a part of another reel uh, which is destroyed or you can you can make a brass hex to go over there and uh, just make a new handle for it and it's not it's not that difficult to do that um, for these you can either get a replacement off another reel or you can make a brass one which uh, isn't that difficult either if you've if you've got those kind of skills so there you go there's a nice little bodex it's um, it's got a line guide on it so there's no wear on the cage and um, that'll probably go on for years and years and years okay lastly I was just going to show you these uh, little skelly fly reels most of these you've actually seen before um, this one is in the last video I think um, this is the Union Hardware Sunnybrook which is quite a nice reel but um, it's always alleged that this is a copy of the uh, original Meisselback and uh, what I have here is um, this is not the original Meisselback this is actually a Fruga and I think this is the 60 yard if I remember rightly I can't quite see that in the focus yeah it's a 60 yard so this is the slightly uh, smaller one it's just come in which is why it's in the state it's in and the ratchet is in working order um, although having said that you can't actually move this piece at the moment that needs to be freed up with something now it all needs to be polished up and uh, we take the front off and um, sort it all out on that uh, but what I was going to do was just show you the comparison uh, because the, both of these reels are supposed to be copies of the Meissel back featherlight and you can see they're, they're not identical copies in any way there's slightly different uh, mechanism here for the um, ratchet and there's a different place for it on here and they're a different size to the uh, the Sunnybrook I don't think it comes in different sizes and this is, looks like a 120 yard whereas this is a 60 it might be an 80, uh, no I think it's more like a 100 actually um, uh, it's interesting to, to see the difference between the two um, they do have different stampings in the middle but apart from that they are constructed in a sort of what's now a traditional uh, American raised pillar fly reel, this is what they're called uh, this one's in very nice condition I must say now the one thing I should just point out is um, this, this particular reel here this would have been made in the 30s and 40s probably which is when, nearly when they stopped making these because it has a celluloid handle and that is old and it hasn't been mucked about with so that probably is original so this is not this is more like a mid-century reel than an early 1900 reel and this one here as you can see has the wood handle now this probably is very early because of that um, composite materials tended to be used after about the 30s so that's interesting to note um, Sunnybrook, Union Hardware Sunnybrook um, they're always written on the back here and there's usually nothing on the base except made in the USA um, these usually have the yardage written on the box and um, I think there should be uh, yeah you can just see it there look the uh, the Fruga logo with the book with the bulldog and everything is written on the uh, the real foot okay so those are some things you need to watch out for that brings us to the end of this little video um, unfortunately we don't have much more to show you now because it's still very quiet okay thanks very much for watching bye